Welcome everyone to our Pillow Tools for Teaching Online webinar. I'm Tasia Giles, Director of Community Engagement at Jacobs Pillow, and we are delighted to be with all of you. The intention behind this webinar is to uplift and illuminate the Pillow's virtual resources, especially re relevant now, as access points and to spark ideas and connections related to your research, your artistic practice, and to support curriculum for yourself, your colleagues, and your students. Thank you for taking time to join us today, and I will turn this over and welcome Director of Preservation, Norton Owen. Well, greetings, everybody. I'm so happy to be doing this and having a chance to bring more uh, eyes to our online resources. Uh, as many of you know, we have been building these online resources for nearly a decade now, uh, but they have never been more robust than they are at this point in time and never more needed. Uh, so we're really delighted to be uh, sharing with you some of the ways that you can use these resources and hopefully um, make you aware of more things that than you previously knew were available to you. I'd like to uh, pass this over to my very able colleague in the archives, our um, associate archivist, Patsy Gay. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today. Today's conversation is going to start with a walkthrough of our virtual resources. Then we're gonna move into some examples of how these pillow virtual resources could be used in a classroom. And then you'll learn more about the specifics of the College Partnership Program from Tasia. So let's dive in. And so to start with, the first resource we're gonna look at is Jacob's Pillow Dance Interactive, which is maybe our largest resource. It has over 450 uh, video excerpts. It has over 60 multimedia essays and there's just a real lot of meat there and we keep adding to it. There's uh, video clips of every performance we've had on our main stages since 2011 and we're constantly adding more essays and videos to it. Norton, do you want to talk about navigation? Yeah, so uh, there are various ways of course that you can get into this and I um, really encourage you to try some of the different ways that we'll just um, briefly go through at this point because uh, part of the whole the whole thought behind this is guided discovery and that you can find things in different ways that you might not have looked at otherwise so you know here after clicking on menu you can see these four basic ways and let's start with the browse um, it, this is of course the, the the main way that you can dive into the collection and you can see they're ar arranged by the oldest first um, but if you come back up to the top you can browse by decade if you want to choose the 50s for instance and see let's just look at what's here in the 50s there's actually a fair amount um, and you'll see there just the, the that one area that one decade that you've chosen but you can also look at genre for instance if we go back to the top and we say um, by genre we can then look at different um, and of course we have to wait for always for the um, for this to, to catch up with us. There we go. Um, then we can choose ballet, for instance. Um, and if we do that, we can, and one thing to remember that when you choose by genre, it sort of mixes them up. Um, remember what I was saying about it's, it's, um, it's really designed for discovery. So, um, so if you choose to look by genre, it, it does not go according to um, period and you can really jump in at any point. But what's wonderful about that is it also may lead you to excerpts that you might not have thought to look for otherwise. But let's go back. Um, well, we can look uh, another way to look for anything and this is on any particular page, there's the search function. So here we could put in, let's, uh, as an example, let's look at, put in Trisha Brown. Um, and here, if we click on that, 
then we get to see uh, a number of different things. And uh, important to remember here that, of course, it'll bring up things not just that are with her company, but also just if her name is mentioned in somebody else, like Jody Melnick there, that reason that that's there is because she mentions Tricia Brown or in Steve Pax Paxton. But you'll see, um, uh, uh, you know, it's usually aggregated at the top. Uh, uh, you'll see an essay and we're gonna go We'll dive deeper into the essays now, but you know this shows you basically what you'll get from the search function. So let's go back to the menu and um, look at the themes and essays area, because this um, this is uh, I think for the purposes of many of the people on this call one of the meatiest areas that you can look at. There are five curated themes, over sixty essays, but we're adding them all the time. But let's look at um, Dance in the African Diaspora as an example. Um, as we dive into this theme, uh, you'll see it was curated by John Propiner. You can click on an introduction by John there to watch a video of him explaining uh, what he was getting at in these. But then you've got a range of different essays. Some of them are about specific people. Um, but also there are others that are based on, uh, for instance, the tracing social and political activism, the one with the beautiful photograph of Alvin Ailey and Carmen de Lavalade. Um, you know, this essay also looks at Catherine Dunham. Um, and, and just to, you know, as you dive into any of these, you can see that uh, at the beginning, it just looks like, oh, well, here's a lot of text. But no, uh, each of them has uh, as well videos, and these are videos that you can't see anywhere else except either on this resource or here in person. So um, we really made it an attempt in these essays to do a deep dive into uh, what we have and not just look at the things that are um, just at the dance excerpts that are in the dance interactive area. So. Um, we also look at photographs. Uh, here's a photograph of Helen Tamiris in 1942. Um, we see programs, um, and you know, here's a photograph of Donald McHale. Um, so there are a lot of resources, and, and part of what we're really trying to get at here is providing some of the primary resource materials that are so difficult to find otherwise. Um, and as you uh, guide your students towards doing their own research, we hope to provide here um, some look at, at what we have in the archives. Of course, there's always going to be way more that people can see here on site, but um, because we are looking at so many different material types here, that we are hoping to give some idea of the, the wealth that's here. So now, um, so that's the themes and essays area. Uh, another big area that we can get into here is the uh, playlists. And um, maybe Patsy, if you want to say a little bit about those. Sure. So we have uh, dozens of different playlists here um, that talk about a variety of different themes that bring together videos in different ways. Um, it's important to note that if you sign up for our virtual Pillow Views mailing list, you'll get a new uh, playlist that's sent out every month. And those playlists include new videos. So we're releasing new videos onto Jacob's Pillow Dance Interactive every month. And this new curated theme is created by Norton with a dis new description about each video that talks about it in relation to the theme. And so for the last month, the theme was human interaction, something that we felt was really compelling and needed to be talked about right now, especially in the dance field and using these archival resources to discuss how dance it uniquely deals with humans interacting together. As you can see, there's a range of videos that are included together in here. And so this is a great way, again, to find new materials. This resource is really meant to be a discovery aid. Yes, you can search for something knowing what you want, but it's really easy to fall in and find new things through Jacob's Pillow Dance Interactive, which is entirely why it was created. 
you want to talk about the guest game, Norton? I know yeah, you Yeah, absolutely. Because this is, um, talk about accidental discovery. This is uh, the, the most accidental way of all. And one of the things to remember about this, this resource that I need to point out to people all the time is that um, it's, it is randomly generated which means, you know, yes, we came up with the overall questions, um, but qu the question format, that is. And then um, the, the way that, that you're given these multiple choices is totally randomly selected each time you play the game. So that means that it is um, endlessly new. And I, um, uh, you know, a little dirty secret, I enjoy playing it myself sometimes because uh, it, it really, to me, is new as well. Um, it's, it's all material that I've put in there, so I do know it pretty well, although there are times when I don't guess correctly either. Um, but the point about this is that it really can um, lead you to things that you would never have selected to see on your own. And uh, again, allowing you to, uh, to discover them. You know, every time you have a multiple choice, you can look at the, the choice to see whether, uh, whether that is answering the question or not. Uh, before you finally decide which one it is. And no, uh, sometimes you, you guess wrong. But it also tells you which was the right question. So you have a chance to learn from this as well. Um, I like to think that it is a very educational um, uh, endeavor, even if you are sort of killing time and having a good time. Uh, and, and as I say, the biggest advantage of it is leading you to things. Uh, oh, this question I just have to say something about because the which performance came first when we were first developing this resource, um, we realized that it was taking the question a little bit too literally. And in fact, um, it was putting up performances from the very same season. Uh, and yes, one of them might have happened in July and one of them might have happened in August, but nobody, including us, would, would know that information. So we had to do a little um, uh, retrofitting to make sure that the, that the options that came up were not from the same season. Uh, so we've, we've made that change now. And I think at this point, uh, it's, a, you know, it's a pretty engaging uh, kind of thing. I think that's probably enough to go through at this, uh, in this venue, but I encourage you all to play it on your own and see how, how, how good you do. Thanks, Norton. So I'm going to move on to the next resource that we have to discuss, which is archives.jacobspillow.org. It's the archives online catalog. And this is really like a library catalog. It has records for every item that we have here in Jacob's Pillow. Um, it has uh, finding aids for archival collections, records for every video, photographs, programs, etc. It's interesting to think about it as a virtual resource because the records for all those videos, you can't watch them in here. So unlike Jacob's Pillow Dance Interactive, where you can watch those video excerpts, in here you just get the record about a video. So you know it exists and you have to come watch it in the archives. But we wanted to include it because there is a lot of content actually on here that you can access online. We have all of our digital programs up here in Jacob's Pillow Dance Interactive. We have many digital video, uh, sorry, digital photographs up here. Um, it, on our archives. And so you can, uh, you can search through and find things, but it's a great one to talk about because it's not maybe as uh, obvious what resources might be here. Do you want to talk about how to navigate, Norton? Yes. Um, so uh, the, the, the searching, you know, typing into the search bar is the best way. Um, and, and of course, because here we literally have thousands and thousands of options here. So we're showing the example of just typing in Paul Taylor and um, using quotes around multi-word terms is sometimes the best way. Otherwise, you'll get everything for Paul or everything for Taylor. But um, here you can see uh, um, the 
the mouse is hovering over full results because it's best to click on that. If you're looking specifically for videos, this is a good way that you can um, dive into a particular uh, material type. You know, here you can choose an object type and, and click on that. But you might also, um, for instance, programs, and you can see that's the, the biggest item that we have, programs, because every time the words Paul Taylor are used in a program, even if that's saying in a dancer's bio that they danced in the, in the choreography of Paul Taylor, it's gonna come up. Uh, and that's why there's 298 uh, printed programs. But so this is a great use for the relevant search, actually. Yes. Often we want the results by date because that's a very understandable way. But uh, when you're dealing with programs, using relevance might actually be a better model um, because then you can uh, choose to have results that have uh, Paul Taylor come higher in it should be showing up at the top. Yes. <laughs> But also, just know that the um, th hmm. that any of these, any of the different ways that you poke around in here, you're going to be looking at. Um, gosh, I mean, you know, we have tens of thousands of of uh, records in this resource at this point. So there is a lot, and you can, of course, um, telescope it further by uh, adding other search terms and so forth. And all of these, just to clarify in terms of how this works, you know, uh, you're only going to be able to see certain things um, online, but you know, all of these things that we're demonstrating right now, all of these photographs, for instance, you can look at online. And so, um, so there's really quite a lot that you can see. And, and also to bear in mind with those printed programs, which on the one hand you might think, oh, well, there's not that much in terms of a printed program, what am I gonna be able to see? Well, bear in mind for the last um, 20 years or so, we have been, uh, you know, we're seeing one of the older ones there, but in the more recent programs, we have um, we've been commissioning essays, and so there are yeah. I mean, of course, this is amazing to look back at this this early program and see um, you know that it was a shared program that Carmen de Lavalade was on the same program. Um, they were pre presenting Oriole um, with Liz Walton, Dan Wagner, Sharon Kinney, Renee Kimball, um, you know, Paul Taylor himself. Uh, this also happened to be the first um, professional performance uh, that Twyla Tharp was engaged in. So, you know, you'll see her name in there as well. Um, but any, I think she was only in, there she is in Spoodorama. Um, so, but if you look, for instance, at a more recent program, um, uh, like, yeah, if you do the descending, you'll see and on the more recent programs, you'll be able to see that uh, that there is a an essay, um, you know, pillow notes essay, written by one of our scholars in residence. So um, so there's really quite a lot of heft in these, um, you know, that you'll be able to to read what in this case Suzanne Carboneau has had to say about Paul Taylor. And if you weren't at this performance you know, the only way that you would have had access to this essay would have been in your printed program, but here they are all collected online in this way. So, um, you know, another way that you can get at some of the, the wonderful meat of the archives here. Then, um, Patsy, do you want to mention about the digital exhibits that are on here as well? Sure, yeah. So we have a few digital exhibits, some of which uh, are might be more interesting and useful. Uh, Jacob's Pillow Remembers is one that's written by uh, Norton Owen, and these are uh, memorials of important people that have passed in uh, various years. These started in 2008. And so uh, there are images and text written about uh, various people in the field, um, Irina Baranova, but, but also people who are important to the pillow for various reasons. Um, and so you can click on them and read more about uh, 
Mary Anthony, for example, or um, other uh, important figures in the dance field. Another yeah, uh, exhibit that might be yeah. interesting is we don't have a lot of didactic exhibits, but um, we're working to add more. And one that we have to start with, which might be of interest to you and your students, is about dramaturgy and dance. And so this is answering a question that we get in the Pillow Archives frequently when we have performances that have dramaturgs, which is, what is a dramaturg? What does a dramaturg do from dance for in a dance piece? And so you can uh, read through various references to performances that have happened at Jacob's Pillow, talking about the idea of dramaturgy and dance, uh, exploring more about what that means and how it was used in various instances going back uh, quite some time, as you can see. Let's switch to Pillow Voices, uh, the next resource we wanna talk about, which is the one of the newest resources that we have coming out of Jacob's Pillow, which is really exciting. This is our podcast. Uh, it's been releasing episodes since last summer, so we have a bit of content here. You see we're on episode 12. Um, and these, unlike a lot of podcasts that you might encounter, which, uh, are new conversations. These are new conversations with the past. And so we bring uh, various scholars, journalists, archivists uh, into the archives. They dig through content that we have and then contextualize that through their voice. So here is one with Jay Soto, uh, this study of Jose Limon, artist and immigrant. So looking at Jose Limon's work, but in a very contemporary context, you'll notice that in addition to being able to listen to the episode, which you can do uh, here or on Spotify, on Apple Podcast, iTunes, those sorts of things, um, for the more recent episodes and working backwards, we also have transcripts uh, so that these can be really uh, well utilized resources, which allows also for them to be used in a more scholarly context, if that uh, works for you and your students. Absolutely. And, you know, this also, we are adding one podcast every month. Um, we've been launching those together with the virtual pillow views. So, for instance, on uh, this coming Saturday, we will be launching new contact, new content on Jacob's Pillow Dance Interactive, as well as launching a new podcast. Um, so that happens once a month. You can also, of course, subscribe to the podcast, which is the best way of making sure that you um, continue to get those in your feed and, and um, stay on top of those as well. And it was really a goal for us to be bringing out important voices in the field as well as voices you might not have heard. So being able to listen to Paul Taylor, Merce Cunningham, Ohad Naharin, uh, Arthur Mitchell speaking about themselves and their work uh, is something that is really important and not something that's always accessible to uh, dancers. So we're really excited to be bringing this uh, opportunity to everyone. Absolutely. Um, so shall we move on to the Pillow TV on YouTube? Yes, thanks, Martin. So Pillow TV is our term for our YouTube channel. It's uh, the Jacob's Pillow YouTube channel. But there's the reason we call it Pillow TV is because there is so much content that lives here. And a lot of it is archives content, is video that we think you might enjoy seeing. Uh, I'm going to bring your attention to our post-show talks, which we uh, make playlists of and have been doing since 2013. And so we create edited cuts of the post-performance discussions, which happen with one of our scholars in residence and uh, artists, directors of the company, performers. And you can see, here's our 2017 season, talk with Joan of O'Care, uh, Miami City Ballet, uh, Faye Driscoll, Roy Saf, Paul Taylor. So a, a really broad range of conversations. And if you're using, say, Jacob's Pillow Dance Interactive, you can watch an excerpt of that performance 
watch a clip of the of the dancing and then come here and be able to pair that with a conversation about that very performance with the artists who are involved. Yeah, and absolutely. This is another thing to bear in mind as we, you know, we're going to later in this webinar, we're going to talk about some of the ways that we know that educators are using the resources. But we really encourage you to be as, um, you know, ca cast your net as widely as possible and realize that because all of this material is out there in various ways, that there are you know, really endless possibilities for ways in which you can use that, you know, to be, and, and, and yes, it's true that most of the excerpts that are on Jacob Spiller Dance Interactive are, are just one to two minute clips of dances, but when you can pair those with a 20 minute talk uh, with hearing from the artists themselves, it really um, adds another aspect to it and you know yes there is a little more you know because these are different platforms you know you have to know where to look but that's what this webinar is about uh to sort of sh to show you some of the places where you can look to find this content so that you can uh then point that out to your students and show them where they can find things you know where where we're looking right now in the pillow talks you know, looking at a 26 minute um, uh, distillation of a pillow talk that we did on Pilates. You know, here's something that m many students are, are dealing with, uh, you know, on a daily basis, but may maybe never had thought about uh, looking at Pilates from a scholarly standpoint or, you know, from a historical standpoint. And so for them to, um, to be able to, uh, see that here and actually hear from people who, uh, you know, in the thumbnail, you can see um, Anne Hutchinson Guest, well, uh, who was someone who actually studied with Pilates. So, you know, hearing from a firsthand, um, uh, you know, witness to what it was like to be in his classes is really an incomparable chance. And now I'm going to switch over to uh, Jacob's Pillow Dance Stream. This is a resource that is only available to our active local college partners. And so uh, this is something that really only you guys have access to. It is our beta version of a full video streaming service. Uh, the content that is on here is from the 2019 season and the 2018 season primarily, with also some historical uh, materials added in, uh, including, let's see, we'll bring it down. So there, there's a lot of content, 2018 season. We have a few uh, performance and talks from before 2018, uh, but we also have documentaries that relate to the pillow and Ted Sean and Men Dancers films, as well as uh, Dennis Sean films. And so the plan for this was to be adding a new video for every perform new uh, selection of videos for every uh, festival season, which of course is going to be a little bit mixed up this year since we aren't having a festival season this summer. Yeah, so our hope is to actually take this opportunity to uh, go backwards a little bit and we'll, um, we are, are planning to add some video so that this will still be a growing resource. So we'll be able to go back in time um, with some full content, um, probably starting with the most recent years um, and, um, and, and starting from there. But it is a growing resource and also something to mention in terms of this um, is that we are planning to um, uh, change the, the site so that there will be some more opportunities for you to search. Uh, and, and we're aiming for this to happen before the fall 2020 um, school year gets underway. So uh, you'll need to watch your emails for 
or news on that, but uh, we're trying to be responsive to feedback that we've been getting from users um, and trying to find more ways to make this resource more um, uh, more user friendly for for you all. Um, yeah, right now it's definitely in our in our beta version. There, are, you know, things we would like to add include a search function, but so you know it does require a little bit more work to be able to browse through here. But it it has almost every performance that's been on our main stages for the past two years. In addition to that, also many of our hour long pillow talks. And so, in a performance, when you're watching it, there is both. You have the intro credits, you have the full evening length performance, and then you that is also paired with uh, here, the evening length performance, and each one has a post-performance discussion at the end. So it's really a lot of content. For many of these works, there is also a pillow talk that was programmed in conjunction with that. And so for this Paul Taylor uh, performance, for example, you, there's, a huge amount of content there, an evening like performance, a post-performance discussion, and then an hour long scholarly talk uh, that all work together to create a lot of contextualized material that can be used by your students in various capacities. And although we're gonna be dealing with your questions uh, later, I'll just point out, because one question came on uh, in terms of, of how accessible this is, I just wanna clarify that uh, it is uh, IP address uh, authenticated is the way that people get into it. So um, it's, it is um, something that is locked down to people being able to uh, get to it on, from campus. But we have also, uh, there is a um, easy, it's easy proxy compliant so that uh, many uh, college libraries have systems where you can, as long as you are logged in to your account from somewhere else, you can access college resources. And if your library goes through the necessary steps to do that, then we can make Jacob's Fellow Dance Stream available to them from off campus also. So yes. um, thank you, Norton. Yeah. Yeah, as long as, as long as you are an active paid up college partner, we can connect you to this resource and we do it like a traditional library database resource. So we connect with your library, um, get them on, onboarded, and it becomes one of the resources that is available on your uh, library database website. So it, you know, it shows up right next to JSTOR is Jacob's Pillow Dance Stream. And uh, it is easy proxy compliant. So if your institution uses that, we can set up virtual access, which has become increasingly important these days uh, as we're all accessing so many things virtually. Yeah. So that, just to be clear, you know, that is as long as, um, you know, you're a, a current uh, college partner, um, that is something that should be available to you. And if you're, unsure or, or um, and, you know, that please reach out to yep. Tasia or Patsy or myself, and we can um, make sure that you're getting what you should be getting here. Speaking of virtual resources, I want to show the virtual pillow website. This is something that has come about just in the past few weeks, as so many of our institutions are finding ways to be active and engaged online. And so virtual pillow is jacobspillow.org jacobspillow.org slash virtual dash pillow. This is the site where you can find information about these activities that we're having online. You can see last week was a, a pillow talk conversation with Judith Jameson that Norton Owen uh, edited in more content to and we did a live YouTube stream of that. The recording is still available. And pretty soon we will be adding onto here a repository where you can access recordings of the past events that we've done, uh, including a panel with international uh, dance artists talking about COVID-19 um, and more activities that will be upcoming. Right. 
Anything you want to add to virtual Pillow Norton? Well, no, just that, that there is going to be more and more every week on here. So we, we haven't yet put everything that we've been doing in the past uh, few weeks onto this page. But the goal is this is where it will be found so, uh, so that these live events that we are doing, uh, if you've missed any of them, that you'll be able to come to this page um, and, and find, find anything that you might have missed. So the next thing that we want to dive into is looking at some examples uh, that have been given to us from um, educators who are already sharing some of our online resources in the classroom. So what I want to start with is uh, Vincent Thomas, who is actually on the call with us today uh, from Towson University. And Vincent uh, has been using uh, Jacob's Fellow Dance Interactive in um, a couple of different ways. First, he mentions that for uh, his freshman first year majors uh, in modern technique class, he uses the themes and essays area. And over the semester for each theme, uh, the students watch the curator's video and select one or two artists to explore and do a deep dive. Um, he says that he encourages uh, his students to explore an artist that they're not familiar with. Um, and then they do an in-class discussion on findings and discoveries in different affinity groups. Um, from there, he talks about doing a, a creative physical report back uh, to, of the group's discoveries. And um, he just says that this has been an amazing uh, discovery for on many levels for the dance majors. Um, then also in his movement enhancement skills for men class, um, there he's created different video bundles as he refers to them. He, he's made five different bundles um, to view over the course of the semester. And each video bundle contains various video clips of men dancers and artists. Uh, they have three reflective questions to respond to based on the videos. And then these video bundles correspond to the content of the class. So um, I, these are a couple of different ways that Vincent has been using, uh, using the resources for his students. And then Patsy, you have some others. Yeah, thanks, Norton, and thanks, Vincent. I'm gonna present a couple of ideas that come from one of our beloved scholars and residents here at Jacob's Pillow. So the first are for dance history classes or dance appreciation classes, um, using Jacob's Pillow Dance Interactive as practice viewing and movement description. This could be preparation before viewing live performances or before viewing full length dance performances. The instructor could select about four clips to stream in class. Students view, take notes, and then share responses, starting with clips that are more familiar, uh, more uh, comfortable dance styles for your students, moving into uh, clips that uh, are more wide ranging. The dancers in your class could uh, have practice then looking at dance and being able to talk about dance and describe movement together before moving on to more complex ideas. Or another idea is pairing readings with selected clips to illustrate concepts. For example, Anne Daly's The Balanchine Woman, pairing that with a variety of pas de deux from Jacob's Pillow Dance Interactive to discuss the representation of women in ballet or Jack Anderson's Idealists, Materialists, and the 32 Fuetes, looking at that essay and then pairing it with examples of Sacre de Printemps or Rites of Spring, which we have multiple of on Jacob's Pillow Dance Interactive. Other ideas are using these resources in choreography classes. For one thing, these could be used to help students develop an aesthetic as a more self-directed form of learning. The students could browse select numbers of excerpts, especially those that are more unfamiliar to them, and have them determine which they prefer, start to articulate why do they prefer that, what are they being drawn to, uh, perhaps even writing that out, and then allowing that young choreographer to analyze the choreographic elements they've identified, movement generation, relationships to music, use of technologies, things like that, to help them start to generate uh, an idea of what their idea of aesthetic could be. Or also using the post-performance discussions that we have on YouTube, asking students to identify creative process or value statements embedded within the artist discussions of work. 
using it to generate discussion about what inspires artists, what uh, are creative values, and help potentially students start to develop their own individual artist statements. I um, wanted to take this opportunity to uh, just give a bit of background about the College Partnership Program that was actually launched in fall of 2016 with the mission to engage college and university faculty and students in the PILLOW's year-round resources. And through this, nurture our professional and artistic networks, strengthening the field for artists, educators, and students through academic research, curriculum development, dance making, and dance pedagogy. Um, varied programming connections include um, orientation and research in the archives that is specialized, attending pillow labs, which are works in progress showings by artists and residents, participating in the annual college partner convening that brings faculty and students together to discuss critical issues in our field, and as Patsy mentioned, the beta testing um, access for the full length live streaming performances under the Dance Stream platform. We hope that these engagements are a catalyst for discussion and action while we engage not only all of you, but the next generation in our field. And this partnership has really evolved into a cohort of institutions based largely in New England. And we offer both institutional and individual memberships. And just to a note that the institutional membership, those benefits are extended to faculty across the institution. And we get really excited about that cross-disciplinary work. So that's an aspect I wanted to highlight. But this partnership does not grow or evolve in isolation. It is in response to you, your research, curiosities, and your needs. Uh, and certainly in light of these times, we want to hear from you what your needs and interests are and how can we be partners in this work together. Thanks so much for joining us today, everyone. I want to say that also in addition to all of these virtual resources that we've presented, please also think about Norton and myself as resources for you and for your students. You can email us, call us with things that you want to know, with, with uh, research questions, things like that. We're also here for you as virtual resources today and beyond. So thanks for joining us so much and I'll turn you over to Norton. Yes, here, here, and uh, certainly I want to say that in terms of being virtual resources, we have tried to build our online resources in such a way that it really does give you the sense of being taken by the hand and uh, led as you were, as you would be when you come here to Jacob's Pillow. So um, I hope we're successful in that, but uh, even if we're not, uh, as Patsy says, we're always here and ready to help you in any way that we can. Uh, and with that, I'll turn it over to Tasia. Thank you, Norton. And I'll echo Norton and Patsy in sharing my thanks for spending time with us. We invite you to stay in touch as we are a resource and it's in this work together that we can deepen our partnership. Thank you again so much and we look forward to hearing from you. Bye everyone. Bye.